Okay, so I'm just going to do a demo on a um, uh, a mesh based uh, object, which uh, what is going to be a display stand or um, walls, partitions, and enclosures. Yep. Okay, so um, so that'll be a good thing. And uh, so yeah, so actually, if you can email me that, and then I'll um, I'll maybe put it up in a little while. And then uh, so I might just uh, get my email up. And uh, so, have you got my Yahoo um, email? Uh, you can send it to the tape one. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I can yeah, I can get to that. Um, yeah, while I'm doing it, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, okay, so the temptation for things like this is to use model in place because you can make it that way. The problem is um, if you use model in place for something that's got this much detail. It will uh, make the file really big in the end, and also it's going to make it much harder to manage. Uh, so instead of using Mod in Place, I've got a project open already, uh, but I'm going to go um, uh, off the File menu and go and make a new family. So File New Family, and uh, so you've got all these templates. So if you haven't made a family before, uh, when you do, you'll need to have a little bit of familiarity with the different templates that you've got available, and make sure you realise that you can only start a uh, family with one of the templates. And the template you choose makes a massive, a huge difference to um, to the options that you have uh, for the family you're making. And so some of them, these with the grey backgrounds, they're for massing or um, pattern based, which is related to massing, adaptive components, same thing. Um, and then you've got families that will only let you do 2D um, geometry, like the profile families. But I'm not going to start with those, I'm going to start with um, the most generic, which is the generic family, so metric generic model. And if you're ever unsure, that's probably a good one to start with. So metric generic model, and it'll give you a blank file, which is um, set up quite differently to a project. Uh, and so over in the project browser, you can see uh, we've got the uh, only floor plan, uh, which is called ref level, and that's your base level. I might just open up one of the elevations so that you can see that ref level level uh, is at zero, like your ground floor would be in a project, typically. And that's generally the only level that you want. So make sure you're aware of that. You use that level as your base. And so then going back to the ref level floor plan, uh, I'm going to make an extrusion. So that's on the create tab, of course. Extrusion, and I'm going to make it on the intersection of those two reference planes. So we click there, and uh, oops, sorry, forgot the most important thing. This is a I'm assuming it's a circular mesh that you want the the rod circular. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to change the option there to circle to draw, of course, a uh, circular base, and then uh, again click on the intersection of those two reference planes, and bring it out. And uh, actually, I'll just give you a little tip here. When you try to draw things small, if you zoomed out, sometimes it won't let you. Let's make sure you zoom in, and even when you can click the size you want, you sometimes will get a message saying the geometry is too small. So just watch out for that, and you may need to zoom in and also have a look at the scale of the view. So there, the line weight's making it too heavy to read, but if we change the scale to 1 to 5, we can see the lines again. Uh, you can use the thin lines option. I see people just turning thin lines on and leaving it on all the time, and that will cause problems later when you're trying to see things where line weight uh, can help with that. So. Uh, so again, good to know that you can change the scale, which makes it easier to work with smaller things. And so do you have an idea of the gauge you want your lots to be? Um, they might be about that. 5 mil, so that's a 10 mil diameter. And uh, so that might be okay. So I'm going to finish it. And then go into a 3D view, and you can see we've got a very basic cylinder, which will be 250 mil high because that's the default height. But I'm going to change that as well. So I'm going to go to the front view now, and then on the Create tab again, I'm going to make a reference plane. So make sure you realise in a family like this, you also have the option for reference line. Sometimes people click on that by mistake and think it's the same thing. But believe it or not, reference lines are actually a more complicated version of a reference plane. You'd think planes would be a step up from lines, but it's actually the other way around with these uh, reference lines. So watch out for those, they're useful 
for a lot of things, but at first uh, you could definitely start with reference planes. And uh, so in the front view again, I'm just going to click a point above ref level anywhere and then take it across so it's uh, horizontal. Then I'm going to, well, I'll do it the right way. I'm going to select the plane and give it a name. Call it height. Uh, but then I'm also going to draw a dimension. Now, you probably know you can just click on this button to make that dimension active. But I'm also going to show you you can draw a dimension here. And I'm going to do that just so I can show you one little thing. So I'm using a line dimension. And then I'm going to hover over the um, ref level there and make sure you realise there is a reference plane there as well, which is a very similar thing to the ref level level. But here it's better to use the, um, the level, unless is yours going to have it, um, everything going down to the ground? Yeah, yeah, so we use ref level as the base for our dimension, and then choose that height reference plane, and then place the dimension, escape twice, so then I can come back and select that dimension and go to the label panel and, uh, sorry now I've changed it, there used to be a, a different option there, so now you click on this button to the right to create a parameter. And so I'm going to call this height. Maybe just to make it clear um, to you, this is not required that name height would be fine but just so it's clear what I'm using it for I'm going to say rod height and then I'm going to leave that option on type and uh, okay so that's an adjustable parameter have I shown you parameters before in families no? probably not you've only done one subject with Revit I think mostly yeah so uh, okay so I'll spend a bit of time explaining it so so a parameter, if you haven't worked with them before, well, you would have in families where um, you've gotten them from other people or other people have made them and then in the library. It makes things adjustable. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, that's it. So it's not that difficult to make them, just like I showed you. And now I can select the dimension and change the value there. And that in itself is actually a useful thing. Um, but also if we go to family types up here, you'll see the parameters there and we can change it there. So let's say we want to do 2000, we can do that. Okay, so now I need to tie that cylinder that I made to the reference plane. So I'm just going to drag that arrow up to the snap to the reference plane and then padlock to lock it. So now I can go to the 3D view and I can't see the reference plane or the dimension, but I can just go to family types to do what's called flexing, in other words, just testing the uh, parameter. So let's say 1500, apply, and 2500, apply, so that's clearly working. This is a very simple example, so there's probably not a real need to flex it, but with more complex setups, you definitely need to uh, test them. Uh, so I'm going to put one more parameter on for the material, so I'm going to select that cylinder, and then in properties, go to the uh, material there and well, I'll show you the best practice and that is to make if it's a family that you're making um, for things that are going to be used in the future it's not a bad idea to do the material in the family normally I recommend if you're making the families midstream while you're working on a project don't bother making the material there because you'll already have the materials in your project so you don't have to make the material here but this is like a default so that if we use it in subsequent projects we've at least got a good starting point. So I'll duplicate this and we'll call it, um, yep, right, so um, powder coated or, yep. yeah, probably powder coated, yep, okay, so uh, metal powder coated uh, black. So I'll just go and replace my appearance with a plastic because powder coating is basically plastic and I'll get uh, maybe so do you want glossy or no, no. no. so I'll go for the low gloss black mm -hmm. um, the matte looks a bit ordinary, so a little bit of glossiness doesn't hurt but you can always bring that down a bit more uh, you can go to matte or 
Um, if you want to go in between matte and glossy, you can duplicate as generic and um, then do that. A little bit of glossiness probably doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's it. I'll just go back to graphics and check here's render appearance and the material is done. But now, in case you need to change that later, I'm going to, um, still with that uh, cylinder selected, go back into properties. Oh, and you can see there the little bug. Have you seen this? When you assign a material, you know you've done it right, but it doesn't come up. It's just the first time with solids for some reason, it often doesn't go on. It'll still be there though when you go back to assign it again. So it is a little bug that happened with... Um, 2016, 2017 it started and they haven't fixed it. Okay, so now again with that cylinder still selected, I'm going to add the material parameter which is the button next to the material slot. You've got that grey button. Right, and now we've got the new parameter button at the bottom. And so we'll call this uh, rod material. Okay, so that family's done, so I'm going to save it and go, uh, well I'll save this so you can get to it. So I'll save it in the Revit library folder on the P drive and where's it going to go? I think generic model, just there's a lot of stuff in there but that's what I might have to do. Um, because I'm going to be making a few families, I'll make a folder for it and we'll call it uh, mesh um, screen. Okay, so uh, and now I'm going to call it metal rod vertical. Okay, so now I'm going to go and make another family. A file new family. And I'm going to use the same template. And this time I'll make a horizontal. Yours is just vertical and horizontal? Yeah. yeah. Now, later you'll see you can use that one rod to go both ways. But I'm just going to show you a couple of little options. When you look in this um, panel here, Family Category and Parameters, you'll see there's a setting there for Always Vertical mm -hmm. and also Work Plane Based. Mm -hmm. That can make it problematic when you need to have things rotated if they're made this way. You can definitely do it, but the only way to really make it work effectively is to set up what's called Controller Families. So they're a family that's basically empty that you load things into to set up things in different axes and then you can control the way they rotate with the family. But I'm not going to do that step because it's, it's a bit too much for your first, uh, first family. So instead I'm going to go to the left or the right view, but I think left is fine, and make another extrusion there similar to what I just made. So again, extrusion and I'll uh, again go to circle and what did we make it five mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah ah yeah here we go see what I mean when it's too small um, it's a problem it gives you this error in Revit so again you can zoom in but also changing the scale uh, seems to help so again drawing a circle now five and there we are okay so I'll uh, finish that one and then now we can see it in the top view and I'm basically going to do the same as I did before uh, make a uh, parameter and now how does not this to go? Anyway, I'll just do it to the to one side. We could do it either side and then have it centered on the um, that center left right reference plane. But I think here because it's fairly simple, I'll just do uh, a reference plane to one side. So with the reference plane again, we'll just make a reference plane over to the right and draw a dimension from that centre left right reference plane to the one on the right and then uh, again give that a uh, a label or a parameter and so we'll call this uh, rod width okay and then we can make that uh, nice even number 1500 something and then uh, Okay, so this time I'll drag my rod over to the right and snap it to that reference plane, but also this time I'll drag the arrow on the left, just away from that reference plane and then back to it so it snaps 
and it highlights it and then I can lock it for that one as well. Um, okay, so then I'll just do the same thing for the um, parameter. And, and uh, yeah, so here this, you can see then why it's worth thinking about the way you're making materials because notice I don't have that material in this, uh, in this file. Mm -hmm. So I won't make it. Uh, I'll show you a trick. We can bring it back into this family later. So instead, I'm just going to go to associate uh, family parameter and add them parameter. And so again, this will be uh, rod material. Give it the same name, that's fine. Okay, so that one's ready to go. Uh, so I'll save that as well. So I'll call this metal rod horizontal. Okay, so they're the two main families we'll need. But then I'm going to go and make another one. So again, file new family. And again, metric generic model. Okay, so now I've got a few files open and, uh, and a few views open. So to make it a little bit easier to manage, I'm going to go to the view tab. And there's this great option here, close inactive. And what that'll do is close all of the unused views in each project, so or in each file. So I've then just got one tab for each file that's open. I can just much more easily switch between them. Uh, so then I'll go to the uh, the first one I made, the metal rod uh, vertical, and then click load into project. But I'm not going to tick a project, I'm going to tick the family that I just created, which still has that default name, family3, but that's okay. I can save it later. And so now I can place that family in this file. And we can, oh yes, we can see it, good. Okay, we can see it there. So then, to get the pattern, so do you have an idea of the spacing you want for your rods? Okay, so that's okay because it's the idea here is that it's all going to be adjustable. So I'm going to don't want to get too tricky with the parameters, so I'll just do an array. Later you'll see it, it will be fully possible to set up an adjustable mesh where the size of the mesh would change, and then the number of objects in the mesh, the number of rods, would be adjustable as a parameter as well. But here I'll just do it manually and, and make use an array to uh, make it. Because they'll be all be even. Well, I'll be all the same mm -hmm. size, yep. Okay. But some, some of them curved and some straight. I thought you showed me some curved ones. The whole thing curves. Oh, the whole thing's curved. Okay, okay, we'll not do that. Really. No, it's not curved. Some of them are straight, and then mm. the only thing that's curved is the arena. Oh, right, but okay. it's still the same width. Yeah, yeah oh, right, yeah, yeah. So you need to make one for the curved one and one for the straight one. Okay. So I'll do the straight one first. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe I'll just move it to, well, I'll leave it there, 700. Yeah. Uh, well, let's say, let's get an idea of the spacing. Let's say we want to do about 300 spacing. And make sure no one can, like, their foot can't stay here. Oh, you need people to be able to stand on it, do they? Yeah. Oh, right, gee, well, then it's got to be really small. <laughs> yeah, I've done mesh uh, floors. Yeah. It's really dangerous because, <laughs> yeah, it's a real problem. We had to, I did them in a warehouse and I had four big walkways well, that's just stick with the that were meshes. Then. Yeah. And uh, we had to go and clad them with perspex and um, oh, yeah. yeah, I could do that later. Yeah, right. yeah. Just, maybe we just do them for one mm. now. So I mean, they they held the people up and they they did walk on them. It's just that when they're walking with bare feet, they said it was a bit uncomfortable. And um, <coughs> was it a residential? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The warehouse mm -hmm. conversions. So you know, it was great. They looked great and gave that sort of industrial look. But yeah, just a bit hard on the feet. So. Uh, so maybe I'll just do them 300, and that way your boxes might work with them um, at that size. So I'll make this uh, 600, and then use the array tool, mm -hmm. and uh, bring that across um, 300. And we'll just do, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, not centered, so I'll do 10, just to make it more interesting. Um, and we can always change the position moving them so you can always select the array and move it afterwards and uh, 
That was clever doing 10. Is that going to be. So I should have done an odd number. I'll do 11. And that way, that's a good principle of design. Do you know about that thing? Odd numbers. And then evens for the, so you end up with evens for the panels and odds for the for the frame. That's an old uh, trick in design that a lot of people use. Especially if you look at Japanese, um, a lot of Japanese buildings, that, that goes back centuries, but it's been used, not just uh, Japan, lots of places to do that. Um, yep, okay, so I've got my vertical rods, and then in the 3D view, we can of course see them. And then I'll just go back to the um, horizontal wad family and uh, again load into project. Mm -hmm. And then make sure the same file's ticked, OK, and then place it. And uh, so again, we can see that, of course, in the oh, view. Yeah. And now this is where you need to have an idea how to work with those parameters. So, firstly, I'll place a um, another instance of the vertical rod because these are part of an array and just make it a bit harder to work with. So, I'm just going to click on component, and then in my properties panel, I can select the original medical rod vertical family and just place that to the side. And that's basically going to act like a controller. Okay, so then I'll select it and go to edit type. And we can see then we've got that rod height parameter. So it's 2000 at the moment. That doesn't divide by 300. So I'm just going to change it to 2100. Click apply, and we can see all of those rods change. So already the parameters are helping us manage uh, this little bit of complexity. And then I'll get the, uh, the horizontal rod. And, oh God, it's too early for me to think about this. 11 times 3,300. Mm. Okay. So, okay, so I'll select it. And then um, before I do the array, go to edit type and make that 3,300. Ah, oh, sorry, 3,000, of course. It's 10 panels, not 11. There we are. Okay, so then to make the um, copies, you can just go to an elevation view. It doesn't really matter which one. I can delete that other vertical rod for now and uh, then again in this elevation view I'll use the array tool again uh, the base point anywhere bring it up 300 and then type in the number uh, what do we do it was, did I make 2100. it 2100 yeah. uh, 7 uh, is it 7 yeah I'll say 8 of course because we've got the extra one for the uh, oh, yeah nice. that's it oh, no, I was just thinking about so it would be seven panels and then eight frames. Yeah. Looks cool. Yeah. So, so then uh, probably the easiest way to get a curved one would be to make another family. And then do the array curved. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to use a sweep to get a circle to go along a curved path. But otherwise it'd be the same. Cool. And that'll do it. And so that'll make it much easier. So now the final thing is to get this to work in a project. Now, we could go as far as making the width and the height adjustable, like I was saying. Mm -hmm. That's a bit more involved, so maybe we'll look at those things later. Can you just save that on the file? Yeah, I'm saving it. It's all, you can get to it. It's all in the P drive, so you can get to it. So, uh, but you'll still need to be able to work with all those things, so that's fine to have, have this. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, metal, <coughs> I won't call it mesh because it's not that fine. Maybe metal grid screen. Mm -hmm. Forward. Okay, so again, saving this on the P drive, so you can all get to it, and uh, if you want to use it. Um, okay, so now there is still a little bit more though to make this work in a project. Um, so I'm going to go to Family Types, and you can see there we don't have any parameters, and that might be a surprise because you saw me make the parameters in the other families, but again they're in the other families, not in this one. So. You can select these things and go and edit the group and get to the family that way, but it does actually make it easier if you place a couple of instances of those off to the side and, and work with those instead. So using the component tool, it's good to see that you can easily place families in families, and that's really the main concept I'm trying to get across. 
And so here, if I select that rod horizontal, go to edit type, there's the rod material uh, parameter. Uh, so I'll start with the other one, so the vertical. So the rod vertical parameter, sorry. Um, let's type family. I'll go to edit type. And you can see there, this is the one where I made the material. So now I'll click on the button next to it to associate the family parameter. Create new parameter. And we're going to call this, uh, again, rod material. Don't want to make it confusing, but I think it'll be not logical to use a different material name. Um, or parameter name. Okay, so now you can see it's locked there. So we can't change it in the type anymore or in the family um, type properties. But that's okay. We can still change it. I'll show you in a sec. So I'll delete that one now and then get the horizontal one and again edit type. And uh, well, firstly, if you want to see that black material, you can do it here before I change the parameter. It's Remember, this material has been loaded into this file now, so I can get to it there. And while I'm at it, I'll show you that trick I mentioned before. If I now select this and go to Edit Family, it should have put it back into uh, into this file. Oh no, it's not there. That's annoying. There is a way of getting it back. Sorry, I've just got to fiddle, but you can. Uh, and yeah, we'll close that one then because we don't need it anymore. And so now, again, with that family, I'll continue and add a parameter. And I don't need to make a new parameter. I've already got the raw material parameter, so I'll just select it. OK, OK. And then I can delete that one. So what that means is now if I go to family types, I've got raw material, and that's going to control both the vertical and the horizontal uh, rods. So that screen now is pretty much ready to go. So I'll save it again and load the project. And this time I'll take my project file. Okay, and then I'll just place in a few of them. You could do an array if you want to. Yeah. Yes, that's a family with two families nested into it. Yeah, so that's the key thing. When you've got any repetition, think about how you can make the management easier by um, having each of the repeated objects in their own separate family. And project work? Yeah, that's right, in project, yeah. So this will be your CarriageWorks file, and then uh, that's what you load it into. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so it makes the management much easier because now if I need to change, the, say, the material of my screen, if I realise I want, uh, I don't know, pink uh, metal, I can just select one of them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to change, I'm just going to change this one. So I'm going to go edit type. There's the parameter. Yeah, so for that, you probably want to make, yeah, to make different copies of the panel family for the different sizes. And then another one for the curved one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, the views are, are still in the one file. So that'll. Well, not views, like parameters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. You can if you can make the height adjustable. Yeah. He, he I, I would have done that, except that we'd have to do the um, parameters for the array as well, and that's a bit more involved because we'd have to set the number of um, repeats yeah. to change as we made it bigger or smaller, mm -hmm. and that's then there's a bit of maths yeah. you've got to put into it. You can do that. You can put formulas in, but yeah. it's a bit more involved. Mm -hmm. And I think here, if if you've only got a few sizes, yeah. it's easier just to make a family for each yeah. one. But yeah, definitely a vertical and a horizontal. It, it's not just going to help with the management, it's also going to keep the file size down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep, no worries. <coughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yep, yep, sure. So um, anyway, I'll just go quickly. I'll change the material here so that you can see how easy it is now to manage this. For some reason, I'm liking pink at the moment. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got some. I don't know, actually, I've got some pink shirts and things now that I that I really like. So, uh, and you know, it's funny. You know how it was the. It's it's. You know, there's obvious associations with pink, but uh, and uh, you know, so baby girls, I suppose, get dressed in pink, and that that probably causes it. But do you know how it started? In the 19th century, 
Well, you're gonna know. What what colour do you think they put onto no, debut boys? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. That's it. Don't know. Really? I, I don't know. It was in the early 20th century. Somehow it flipped. But yeah, the idea was that it was a lighter version of red, and red was seen as the masculine yeah. colour. And pink is a light red, really. So um, that was the, the theory. Yeah. And then it totally changed in the, you know, 1910, 20s, something like that. Yep. So, anyhow, uh, then uh, you'll see in a view where we've got the colours, they're all pink. And this is that. And then I go, go, okay, I'm sick of the pink. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just the line work. Yep, sure. If I do like um, a massive like insert thing, like taking up like that whole space there, is that yeah. easy to do? Like, can you easily delete like a few of those? You'd want to make versions. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe I'll show you that actually because that's good. It'll take it a bit further. No, 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 it's good because it, it's, it's going to help everyone. It's good yeah. to get to this point where you have to think about these things. I feel bad. Um, okay, so you want to do your box, and that's a good. That's actually a better example because then I can look at. Um, some more adjustable parameters. So I make another new family, and I really want to get everyone to not be afraid of making their own families. I, I yeah, I realised in the last project was making families for the last project. Oh, it is. It's, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, because so many people rely on, um, you know, families from manufacturers or Revit City or whatever, and then uh, and there's some great things there. But then it's going to limit you hugely because most of the things you want to design, of course, won't be there. And that's really the difference between interior decoration and interior design. Innovation. Yeah. You need to be able to design uh, everything. And so that's really important. So, so here in my new family, I just use generic models again, just to keep it simple. Make another extrusion. And uh, this time I'll do it uh, with a rectangle yeah. over the... Um, intersection there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to center it, but I'm just setting it up so I can center that in a minute easily. And then I'll go and put in some dimensions and show you some other good little tricks with parameters. So this time I'm putting on a, a dimension uh, from each side to the center line, and then I'll equals it, mm. and then the same the other way. Now, the problem then, if I go and put a dimension on this way, mm -hmm. something kind of annoying happens, but it's not so bad once you know how to get around it. If I go and try to change that size, notice it's not letting me. Yeah. If I, it's because of the equals dimension. Mm. If I move this, it's going to say equals, and that, of course, changes that dimension. Yeah. But ordinarily, you'd be able to click on that number and type in what you wanted. Mm. Um, so the equals dimension causes some problems there. But the great thing about parameters is once you've got a parameter, it fixes it. So I'll make a parameter and I'll call it box width. Now, I don't even need to select one of the lines. I can just select the dimension and make it what I want. That easy. Uh, so I'll do one the other way. And this helps in project files as well. You'll see quite often you need to dimension things like that. Oops, I didn't need the equals, no problem. I'll just go back and edit that. Yeah. Okay, so another parameter. Uh, depth. Box depth. And then 300 again. Yeah. Okay, so I'll finish it. And then go to the front view. And, okay, so this box could be... Um, above the ground at different heights. So I'm going to make two reference planes above that ref level. That's our, in our project, that'll be the, the floor level that we're um, placing it on. So I'm going to make two reference planes for the top and the bottom of the box. And I'll draw my dimension from the reference plane to the first and then to the second. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, Oh, no, it's not going to work, sorry. Thanks, stupid. Okay, so I'll do that uh, in two steps. I'll draw the first one, then I'll draw the second one. It needs to be like that so we can attach parameters to each of those dimensions separately. So it can't be a running dimension. 
if it's continuous, you can't attach the, the parameters separately to each dimension. Okay, so now I'll get the first dimension and add in a parameter, and we'll call this um, base height. Uh, maybe I'll put box just so that it's clear. Um, oh, sorry. Let's say to make it clear, box uh, height from ground or floor. Yeah, floor. And then I'll add another one. I'm just going to change the scale so it's easy for you to read the, the text. Okay, so then another one, uh, which will be just the height. Okay, so it doesn't hurt to label the reference planes as well. So again, this will be box, base, and uh, box. Uh, top. Then I'm going to select my box on the ground and then use the arrows and drag them, lock them, and drag the bottom and lock that to the base plane. I'm just going to show you though, if you look at the properties of an extrusion, you do have the option of setting parameters there to the top mm. and the bottom. So you don't always need to put reference planes in. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, but you'll see when you're doing more complex things, it can help to have the reference planes. Um, yeah, but yeah, you, got, you can do it either way. Um, so that's it. So now, just to test it, I'll go into uh, family parameters and uh, sorry, family types, and then change the. Uh, so what was it? Box height from floor. Let's say what, 600. And then box height. Let's make it even and make it a cube. And doesn't have to go into a 3D view where we can see the box without the reference planes. Mm -hmm. And can test out all those parameters. Mm -hmm. so this is a great example of um, you know all those parameters in action. Uh, so you know 500, 500, 500. Uh, and if they're all going to be cubes, you could actually use the same parameter for yeah, all of them. Yeah, cubes. yeah, so that that could be an option too. Um, yep. Yeah. And so then, yeah. So you want different colours, so we'll set our parameter for that, and I'll show you a great option there. So I'm not going to bother making the material here. I'll do that in the project. So I'll just add a parameter, make it new, of course, and um, we'll make this box material. And I'm going to change this one to instance instead of type. Just so you can see what instance size is going to be really useful here. Okay, so <coughs> then I'll go and uh, save as family. And I suppose I'll save it in the same place. So we'll just call this uh, metal box. Or is it not metal? Coloured box. box. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got my box family, I'll just save that in the same folder. And so then to use it, you've got the option, you could load it into the project if they're going to be in different places. Yeah. Maybe that's the easiest option, but you would also have the option of loading them into the into the family. Mm. But I think here yeah, maybe it makes more sense to load into the project, so I'll do that. And uh, yeah, so here we are. So then I can maybe place, I'll just place one for now, and then go to my uh, elevation to adjust it. So yeah, so we can go then to uh, maybe I'll center it first inside the. Um, oh no, I won't center it. I'll just um, change it and then I'll move it. So edit type, and I can change the uh, box depth there to 300. Also, all those um, sizes to 300. And of course, it changes. But then notice there's no material property here mm. right, because it's instance based. So that means it's in the element properties, not in the type properties. So I did this centered. That's just going to have to be centered on the rod, but that's okay. 
Uh, that's probably how you build it actually, so that's fine. Yeah. And so, so we've got it there, and I'm just then going to do some copies so you can really see how that instance option works. And so let's get a few copies there. Uh, there we go. And okay, so I can easily copy them uh, left and right and forwards and backwards. But if we go into an elevation, and I just change the shaded so I can see them. Um, if I try and copy them up or down, um, it'll work, but notice that the offset uh, is, is different. Yeah, so it's added the offset, so you have basically have to add the offset to the box height from floor there. So just be aware of that, and uh, so there maybe if you've got a lot of these and you want to control them with the parameters, the better way of moving them up and down might be to use the parameter. But then, would you want them all to be different? Or in other words, here I'd have to duplicate the, actual the box. If I change it here, let's say I change it to 1200, they're all going to move. So. What I'll do actually is go back and edit that family and then go to family types and I'm going to change that box height from floor. Down here you can select the parameter and then click edit and I'm going to change that one to instance as well. So yeah, so that's that's going to be much better. So now I'll go back and load into the project again. And here it doesn't matter which option we choose, it's not going to make a difference. But I'll choose the bottom anyway. Okay, so now um, it, I can select them. I oh, now did so. It, it did make a difference because it reset the parameters back to the what I had in the family file. So I do need to go and change the sizes here back to three hundred. Okay. So now though, I can go into properties and change the height of just that one box that's selected instead of all of them. Right, so I'll get another one. And notice I can select these really easily because I've got the option on that you can't see on the screen, unfortunately. It goes off when you've got a small... I'm going to have to fix this resolution. But, uh, yeah, you, you need there are buttons that you need to get to that have been hidden. Uh, but do you know the button that I mean that lets you select by face? Yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, I'll go back to the box material parameter and you can see again it's in the object properties or element properties, not in the type properties. And that's great for what we want to do here because not only can I change the height and make each of those different, let's do one more, I can also change the materials of each one and make each one different. So I can have a, well I'm sick of pink, so let's do a uh, red. Oops, i to stop myself using the end key. Anyone who's done the programming would just go crazy if they couldn't use end at home. Anyhow. Okay, so that one's changed, but the others haven't because it's instance based. So let's do one more. Oops, sorry, I keep going to edit type out of habit, um, but that's not what I want. So again, duplicate, and this can be. <laughs> sorry, so I was so fixated on the end. Of, yeah. uh, that should have been red. <laughs> but we can change it now. So notice, really important that you get into the habit of duplicating your appearance if you're not doing that. And... Uh, Uh, so now finally we'll finish the video on purpose.